those boys. My father was one of the last on the beaches of Dunkirk. I know what a difference it made to his life. I only understand it now. Earlier on in my life, I never understood it. You feel that these young lads shouldn't be coming through, and yet you're so helpless to do anything about it. Every legionnaire dresses very smartly. They all have their blazers and their caps on. Apart from me, and I have the old fish and chip bag, one that I was issued with uh, when I joined up in 1940. For some, it's a familiar journey. For others, okay. it's not. The Cross Keys pub lies right across from the War Memorial. But as the weeks went on, really, then all of us, you know, more and more people started to attend and we became a meeting point and you, we were getting so many people coming in asking for teas and coffees and we thought, well, we'll just make it up in, you know, in big flasks and we just, we don't charge anybody for them, but we ask for donations for Help for Heroes. When we first used to attend, we did get some odd looks. What's sort of evolved through time is because the families also come to the Cross Keys, they see the British Legion badge, we tend to then uh, shadow them through what's going to happen, show them where to stand, if necessary, get them a place to stand, you know, basically be a shoulder for them to lean on if they need us. Um, and you'll see that there'll be three hearses, two which will have the coffins in, and the third one in case one breaks down. I did turn up the day after I got married, which did strike a few people a little strange, but it was a very nice present from my wife to let me come and uh, stand shoulder and shoulder with my fellow bride and members and show my respects. Once there was an obstacle in the, in, the, in the high street, it was actually a skip lorry. And we remained static for about three, four minutes while the vehicle sorted itself out before driving off. But in that time, as fate happens, that had all the hearses adjacent to the, the war memorial, which obviously is the Pelican crossing next to it as well. And at that time, people didn't cross the road. They just stood up and showed their respects. And from that, we have now what we have today where hundreds, sometimes thousands, a few, two, two thousand plus people have been lying on the streets. I think what has happened is this has brought the town together. It's made a more of a community spirit. It's made people probably stop and think. And because we're gathering there together, people talk more to each other. We always say, hopefully we won't see you for a while to the people standing around you. But, I mean, mm. you still do, unfortunately. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. It's not nice to see you here, but... No, uh, it's not, no. No, When we explain it to the um, generals and all the senior officers or units that come to us, they're only too willing to join in with us and, and not turn it into, on their side, to a military parade. Okay. And uh, I mean, if you're in front of the standard bearers, don't worry because what we will do, we won't we won't interfere with because you do this all the time. We will stop at this uh, traffic yeah, light. And then start again. If, if that is another reason why so many people turn up. It isn't a parade. It is just people joining together to give their blessing and uh, hope to the families and uh, to the people who have uh, given their lives for us. I'm always in tears. I can't imagine if it was someone I loved or part of my family and I was stood there. It just must be horrific. It's a real, I think it's a real sense for them that they've gone. You see this giant aeroplane come through the clouds, circle and then land, and then the two coffins, Trooper Hammond and our son, are borne out into the waiting stagecoach. It's all done with immaculate precision. 
It is something that you will never forget. We definitely wanted to go to Wooden Bassett. I have to say, it was truly emotional, standing, overlooking the main street, seeing our son passing through on his last journey. No, it's the families that's left behind. The other people I think of. The lads or the girls, they've done their duty. Willingly. You can question the, if the war in Afghanistan is the moral or the right thing to do, but at the end of the day, I think it's a bit disrespectful to the sacrifice that they've made and what their families mm. have made, really. If you see it in the newspaper, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't touch you, but if you see people standing there and you see the, the hearses go past and you realise, oh, mm. they're actually there, it's actually happening, it's not just a story. It's all over in a matter of minutes. The silence lifts, the people part, the street and there is an end in sight, though it's nothing to do with the war. The airbase is to close in three years' time. The planes, the people, will move elsewhere. But right now, Wooten Bassett carries on. We've not been told to do what we're doing. We're not expected to do what we do. Uh, we just do it because it's the right thing to do.